Hey guys, I just did a live video in case you missed it. I'm going to keep it up for 24 hours talking about group thinking and herd mentality, feeling forced to think like others do. So go ahead and check that out. <laughs> My husband is already here. He's the first one. <laughs> Hello, hello, good afternoon, or, well, depending on where you are, it might be afternoon. Um, hello, welcome to my live. It is now 3 p.m. on the West Coast, a little overcast. I love how I give a, a weather report every time I start. I was <laughs> like, just so you know, this is what it's like over here. So let me know where you guys are tuning in from and what's the weather like or like what are you doing right now? What are you doing while you listen to this? You washing dishes? Are you at work? Are you at school? Are you at the movies? Are you in your car? What are you doing? <laughs> Hello. Thank you again for joining me. This is my last, well this is my last Instagram live for May um, for my series that I'm doing for my YouTube channel. All of these videos that I've been doing for the month of May, all the Instagram lives will be on my YouTube channel. I'm not sure when the next time I'm going to be doing a live is. Only God knows. Literally, only God knows I have nothing planned. But thank you guys for joining. Every time I come, people come, and it's, it's just really amazing. Okay. Hi, 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 hi. North Carolina, sunny and 85. That sounds so nice. That sounds so nice. Good afternoon, Queen. Good afternoon. I'm researching while watching. Oh, that's cool. I hope I'm not messing up your researching. I want you to remember all the stuff you need to research. Driving in Houston, Texas. It's cloudy over there, too. What? Our weather has been all over the place. It has been sunny. It has been rainy. It has been cloudy. It has been hot. It has been cold. California does not know what it is doing yet. So we're still making up our minds. Watching from Ireland, almost midnight. Hello in Ireland, that is so cool. Thank you for joining me, I know that it's late. I'm paying my car insurance fresh out of work. That's right, adulting, that's right. You get your work done, you get that car insurance, you do what you're supposed to do. Jamaica, Jamaica at the beach. Ooh, that sounds so nice. Oh, Jamaica, I wanna go there one day. I really do, I'm going to. Let's say I'm going to go there. There's a lot of places I wanna go. I haven't gone to a lot of places yet, but that is, a goal of mine in life to be able to travel, especially traveling for work would be ideal for me to be able to go um, for a reason, getting paid <laughs> and going and stuff and then having time to like check out the, the surroundings and stuff like that, but that is awesome. Hello, your hair is stunning and so are you. Oh, thank you so much. I did a, I did a trim and when I trim my hair, I straighten it. So I don't flat iron my hair that much. And it's funny too, because I used to flat iron my hair all the time I had relaxer and I flat ironed my hair all the time and it was just like you get so used to it and now that I have my natural hair and I wear it curly all the time I'm just like how did I do this <laughs> maybe it's just because I'm not used to it but curly hair I can whip out and put in all kinds of styles and now I'm like what do I do this is taking forever so thank you for that I put a lot of time into it Fort Myers Florida ooh you look beautiful your hair is amazing thank you it's too hot here I know some places it's already hot it's a holiday in Jamaica, and yesterday I was hoping you would have a live so I wouldn't miss it. Oh, well, I'm glad that you still made it today. I'm renovating my room while watching. Ooh, that's one of my favorite things to do is like reorganizing, redecorating, moving stuff around. I think I got that from my mom because she's like the queen of like switching it up on you. We'll just come home from school sometimes when I was younger, and I'd be like, oh, the couch is in a different room. Okay, <laughs> but it would always look like so nice. Bakersfield, California. Nice. Hello. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. We have a few people here, um, and I don't want to spend too much time taking up your time. I like to keep these around 30 minutes. So we have, we've already talked about a few things this month. Okay, so already, and we're going to revisit this, and it's kind of funny because the other, okay, so what I do is um, I'll pray about what content I'm putting out and then the Lord will put specific subjects on my heart and sometimes it's not until I sit down to film or do a live that I'll get like the complete message. So even though like weeks ago I knew I would be talking about thinking for yourself, which is the title for today, I didn't know that all the other things that I've already mentioned throughout the month of May would kind of tie into that and then be 
basically the culmination of all these topics. So we already talked about getting what you want, stop explaining yourself, and don't forfeit your blessings. So like I said today, we are talking about thinking for yourself. So let's go ahead and get started. So I don't know, you guys let me know, have you ever heard of the term herd mentality or group mentality? Um, I've heard the term, but it wasn't until today that I realized what the definition was, and it's even more concerning now that I know the definition. So let me go ahead and let you guys know what the definition of herd mentality is. According to Wikipedia, I didn't see any like official dictionary term, so Wikipedia says herd mentality mob mentality and pack mentality also lesser known as gang mentality describes how people can be influenced by their peers to adopt certain behaviors on a largely emotional rather than rational basis when individuals are affected by mob mentality they make different decisions than they would have individually and this as a believer is a very dangerous thing. I feel like I talk about dangerous things like so much, like everything is so dangerous, but this is just one of those things that I see a lot um, because if you're on any kind of social media, watching any kind of news, reading any kind of newspaper, you will kind of get the gist that when there are groups of people with a certain political stance, with a, who identify a certain way, it's like we all think like this and not everybody does like you can think about women or I guess I'll talk about what kind of things I identify with and the type of examples that I've seen where there's like a herd mentality to where I'm just like am I doing something wrong do I not care am I not woke am I not enough and it kind of makes me question like if I'm making certain decisions that go against the herd mentality and keep in mind a lot of what the herd mentality is is based on emotional things so for example um even as a woman obviously i care about women i care about them being treated as humans as equals i feel like every human should be treated well with respect and kindness and get the things that they need so anyways i remember one time um this was around the time that the me too movement started and thank god you know people are getting the justice that they deserve. There's been people who have been silent or punished for far too long for speaking up against things that have happened to them. So there was a time that it, during the Me Too movement, there was an award show. I can't remember which award show it was, but I remember following an influencer and she was um, talking about getting prepared for this event. She had her dress, she had booked her hair appointment, her makeup and everything. And a few days before this event, in solidarity with those who have been victims um, in the Me Too movement, there was a few people who had gotten together and said, if you support the Me Too movement, you will wear black because it's to support all the people who have been silenced for too long, who have been invisible. So like in solidarity, we wear black. And she was kind of conflicted which I'm sure a lot of people were. This was a few days before the event. And a lot of people were talking about, um, they were talking about, should I go along with this movement that other people started? So there was, so she was basically talking. She's like, I know I should wear black, right? Like, of course I have to wear black because like, if I care about women, if I care about this, like I have to do this, I have to do this. And even though she wanted to wear the dress that she got, it was just like, if if I don't wear it, I'm gonna look like I didn't care about women, I'm gonna look like I don't support women, I'm gonna look like I, I want people to be so oppressed, and, and it's like this manipulation that you see a lot of times where people feel like shushed a little bit, and I feel like this happens a lot, even as Christians, where if we say something um, with the Bible, it's like, Oh no, now we're judgmental. Oh no, now we're condemning everybody because we have certain beliefs. And this is something that I've talked about a lot with um, my family where it's like tolerance is something that is thrown out a lot. And it's like, you need to be tolerant. Um, but then when we speak up or like, well, we feel this way, I'm not saying nobody else can feel any other way, but can we please have our beliefs? Can we please read our Bible? Can we please quote our scripture? Can we please live our lives according to what we want the scripture, according to what the scriptures say? And sometimes I feel like that's not okay. And even as like, um, 
a mother, let's say, there's different times where I felt like this is how moms think. You know, you look on mommy forums, you look in different um, articles and stuff, and you kind of feel like, oh, okay, if I don't think like this, then I'm not the right kind of mom. I'm not the right kind of woman, or I'm not supporting things as the right kind of black woman. And it's just like, it can be very confusing if you're looking at your life based on other people saying this is how you support a movement this is how you support a cause and if you're not jumping on board with that then there's something wrong with you and you're the problem like you're the reason why this exists because you didn't go on this march or you didn't wear this t-shirt or like whatever it is and I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably dealt with this where you identify a certain way like well I'm a black person or I'm a college student or I'm a mom or I'm married or I'm a Christian and you just feel like there's a herd mentality a dangerous herd mentality where this is how you're supposed to think so let's go ahead and go over some scriptures um, because the Bible um, will help us every time when we're feeling a little bit confused and Romans 12 2 is one of my favorite verses I don't know holla if you like Romans 12 2 but Romans 12 2 says do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good pleasing and perfect will so if you are allowing God to transform your mind and to and you're renewing yourself you're going to know what God's pleasing and perfect will is if there is a cause a movement Um, something that you want to support like there's different ways to do that and God will show you like I need you to step up in this way I need you to help people in this way and I think that's amazing like so many people who are like I started a clothing line so that all the proceeds could go to like this disaster I started a women's shelter so that people can come and be safe I started this I started that and so it's really amazing to see people do that but when you feel like other people are telling you this is how you do it or you don't care, then it kind of makes you question, like, am I doing the right thing? And that's why it's so important to stick close to the Lord, to listen to the Holy Spirit, and to have wisdom. So I'm going to dip back into um, last last week's lesson where I talked about wisdom. So if any of you guys are struggling with, like, I don't know what to do, like, will God give me wisdom? He will. So let's go ahead and read the verse again that I read last week, which is James 1, 2 through 7. So this says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you can be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind that person should not expect to receive anything from the lord so when you ask for wisdom god i need wisdom in this please help me and then you're just like but he probably won't tell me or now i'm still confused like you have to stand firm knowing that god is going to give you the wisdom and it could come in different ways um just like in my video that i talked about with hearing god's voice like it could be an article you come across it could be a lesson on the radio it could be a specific scripture that literally seems to jump off the page at you and it's like this is what you should do This is how you can benefit society, your family, um, your school, like whatever it is um, that you're meant to benefit. Like God will give you the wisdom that you need for that. And let's talk about another one. This I'm excited about because, okay, there are so many things. (laughs) It's like so many things, so many movements, so many causes. And I feel like when it comes to herd mentality and things being emotionally based, How many times have you felt like vengeance is mine? Like I have to be the one to solve this. And it's like you fight fire with fire, eye for an eye, you know, and you just want to go after people. And it's like, this is, you know, we have to fight back. If they do this to this to us, we do it two times worse to them. And it's like this really angry. I feel like there's so much anger, unfortunately, behind a lot of movements because you feel like I'm, you know, I have to seek revenge. I have to have justice, you know, and you feel like by anger, you can do that. But when you're calm and you're peaceful and you're praying, God will let you know what it's going to take. And a lot of times 
well, every time it's a spiritual battle, but God will give you practical steps in how to do things like in the physical realm. Because sometimes, you know, it's just about prayer um, as far as what he instructs us to do. And sometimes he is like, create this foundation or go to like, not foundation for your face, but like create this foundation for like helping this you know, group of people or build this business up or have all your profits go to this charity or whatever. So sometimes he'll tell you this, but um, the reason why I think it's dangerous to go into it being angry and being vengeful, it's like A, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And B, it's like when we're so emotional, we're not thinking straight. And that's why the enemy wants you to be caught off guard and to like spring things on you. Like, what are you going to do? Are you going to react now? Like, you got to do something. You got to do it now. You got to fix it. You got to do that. And it's like, wait a minute, take time to think about it. So in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 through 5, it says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Our weapons have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. There is a lot of power in taking your thoughts captive because a lot of our battle is in our mind. And if you haven't already um, watched my video, go ahead and search on YouTube about spiritual warfare because we're talking about the armor of God and it's like covering your mind, covering your heart, covering you know, every part of your body, every part of what's going to help you with spiritual warfare. So when you're doing that, there's a lot of battle that's in your mind that can be won in your mind. So if you're having all these thoughts that come in and it's like, you're not doing anything, you're part of the problem, this is partly your fault, then you're going to be thinking like, I'm not doing anything. You know, I got to do something. I got to do something. And if we just step out and jump out and try to like do stuff just to do stuff, because sometimes I feel like people are just doing stuff just to do stuff. Like, oh, I donated. I marched. I did this over here. But sometimes God is like, ooh, if you just pray, if you just fast, if you just sit and listen to my instructions, you will be so much more powerful. There will be so much more change in that. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about how do we wage war? It's like we don't wage war like the world does. A lot of what we do is in the spiritual realm. If we would just sit and focus and seek the Lord and what to do, so many problems could be dealt with. We could be so much more victorious, you know, but I feel like a lot of times we're afraid. I mean, who's not scared sometimes when you're just like, oh no, like I have to do this thing because I'm afraid of what people will think of me. I'm afraid that they won't think of me. I'm afraid that they'll judge me. I'm afraid that it, this could affect my job. This could affect my family relationships. This could affect a lot of stuff. But when you're talking to the Lord, um, this is a scripture that helps me a lot all the time. And I was just talking to my sister about this where it's like having peace. I feel like it's so hard in this world to fight. Well, I just, I will say you have to fight for your peace because the enemy is always trying to take it. Jesus said, my peace I give to you. I gave it to you. You have it. But are you going to fight to keep it? Are you going to fight to stand on it? And here's one of the ways that you can fight. And I'm telling you, it works. It works. Um, so Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. So when you feel like this world is going to hell in a handbasket and I can't stop it <laughs> and everything is falling apart, I'm afraid for my future, I'm afraid for my kids, I'm afraid for my job, I'm afraid for my church. I mean, look at it. Look at all the things that are happening in the world. You see it. But are we going to take the time to praise God and to say, you know what? This is what you're doing in my life. These are good things that are happening in the world. Because it's not all bad. There are actually good things <laughs> that are happening in the world. Sometimes it doesn't feel like that. But it is. So if you're, that's one way to fight against fear. Because we're not given the spirit of fear. But of power, love, and of a sound mind. So if we continue to think about what is pure, pleasing, what is excellent, what is praiseworthy, that changes our whole prayer. That changes the whole environment around us because we're now fighting and defending ourselves against the enemy who wants to attack. 
So think about all that stuff. And again, let's go over some of the things that we talked about. If you're afraid of letting people down, in my video about get what you want, I mentioned this. Galatians 1.10, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. So if your whole point in your life is to please others, to make them feel better, to do the most that you can, to, to not offend them, um, not hurt, uh, obviously we don't want to hurt people, but if you're just like going overboard, like, oh, if I say the truth, if I say the Bible verse, if I say anything like, oh no, it could hurt people, oh no, somebody might not like me because they're not a Christian and they don't believe in the Bible, and even within the church, um, there are a lot of things where different churches or denominations believe certain things and you're just like, that's not in the Bible, like, why are you guys doing that but they're like no this is our church this is what we do if you're in this church you're going to do what this church does and that whole gang mentality where it's like herd mentality also known as gang mentality is like that shouldn't be <laughs> you know it shouldn't be like this is my set that i rep it shouldn't be like this church is i'm a part of this gang i owe my life to it i got dedicated here baptized here i'm a member here so i'm gonna do whatever they say like that's how a lot of people get church hurt and get really uh, unfortunately D deal with a lot of confusion and they're just like I don't know what's up and down I don't know what's left or right that's why we have to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and the last thing I'll say is um, in one of my other videos stop explaining yourself is 1st Peter three fifteen. but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have but do this with gentleness and respect so you may have people who are just like, how can you be so calm? You know, look at the headlines. Look at what's happening out there. Look at the news. How can you be so calm? You don't even care, do you? Like, you literally do not care. And this is like, no, actually, I do care. I care very much. But you can take that as an opportunity to explain. This is what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says we can do. This is the power that it says we have. Because when we walk around powerless, devil already won. I'm telling you, we can quote every scripture we want to, but if the word is not living inside of us, if we don't know what our weapons are, devil already won. But when we understand the weapon that we have in the word and the Holy Spirit and what Jesus did on the cross, it changes everything. So you can come at me and say, why are you not buying this t-shirt? Why are you not going to this movement? Why are you not doing that? It's like, I know my purpose. I know my calling. I know my identity and I know what God is telling me to do. That's why I'm uploading YouTube channels. Uh, YouTube videos on my channel. That's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm writing this. That's why I'm going here because the God need because the world needs to know that Jesus loves them. The world needs to know about God. Do you understand that every problem would be solved if everyone just understood like God loves me. God has a purpose for me. He wants me to love other people. He wants me to see my identity in him. He doesn't want me to wage war like the world does. He wants me to pray. He wants me to be willing to be obedient, to be willing to sacrifice, you know, to be humble. All the problems would be solved, but we live in the world and not everybody serves the Lord. Um, <laughs> and that's just what it is right now. But, you know, we have eternity with Jesus and and that's what we look forward to. But as while we're in the world, though, y'all take up your weapons, take up your spiritual weapons like we need you to fight. We need you to fight and we need you to not be afraid. And I guess this will be the last thing I say. I'll say one more thing and then I'll go through. Um, I won't have a lot of time for questions this time, but I had a dream last night because something that I used to deal with a lot is fear. Oh, crippling fear. Just like, oh, if I do anything that's um, that the church doesn't like, that um, African-Americans don't like, that women don't like, that, you know, politics don't like, if I do something they're going to get me. <laughs> like They're going to get me. And that's what the enemy always wants you to think like, oh, we're going to get you. We're coming after you. Like you better conform. You better obey. You better do what we say. So for me, fear is something God, thank you, Jesus, <laughs> that he delivered me from. And when I had a dream, this wasn't last night, but two nights ago, actually, I had a dream that there was like two men um, coming for me and my family. And then they had guns. And I was just like, here we go again. I've had dreams like this before. And the interesting thing is each time I've had a dream about being held um, at gunpoint, 
I know that I've grown in my physical life because of some of the things that will happen in my spiritual dreams and stuff. So, like, I've reacted differently in different dreams and different points in my life. And it's gotten progressively better. Me standing up for myself, and it may not seem like a big deal, but it is. Like, God does speak to you through your dreams. So, anyways, I had a dream, and there was, like, two guys with guns. And I was just like, here we go again. You know, with this stuff, you know, I'm tired of it. And instead of being afraid, I was just, like, annoyed. Like, almost like, oh, this mosquito, you know, it's like two guys, big guys at gunpoint who look like gang gangsters. But instead of me being afraid, I was like, I'm going to walk right up to them. And I was like, in the name of Jesus, like, you get away from me and my family. You have no right to our family. And then they're, and this is kind of funny, but it's weird. But <laughs> in the, um, in the dream, they were just like, oh, the old calling on Jesus name trick like that doesn't work like oh you think just by calling because other people call in the name of Jesus like and it works for them it's gonna work for you and I was like you know what stop intimidating me it's not gonna work it doesn't work and it's never going to work and that's something that I've been praying even in the natural in the physical realm where I've just been like it's never gonna work <laughs> like you're never gonna shut me up I'm never gonna stop the fear mongering is never going to work. It's just never going to work again, so get away from me. And that's something that the Bible even says, like resist the devil and he will flee from you. If you're always giving in to fear and anxiety and worry, the devil is gonna keep coming in that area. But when you're just like, you know what? I know who I belong to. God is mighty and he sits on the throne. He made the heavens and the earth. Who are you, you know? And by God's grace, by his power, we can fight anything. And that, that was just really encouraging to me. So do pay attention to the dreams that you remember and ask God for clarity on that. But yeah, I'm gonna be, um, I'm gonna be going through these now. Thank you for listening. I have a little bit of time. Like I said, I don't want these videos to get too long. So let me go back and see if there's anything. Someone says they're excited to learn. Yay. Yeah, I haven't even, I haven't, I guess I, like I said, today was the first time I actually looked up herd mentality and I was just like, wow, that makes sense. Stand behind thee, Satan. Exactly. Get behind me, Satan. You have no room. <laughs> Oh, there's some nonsense in there. Just ignore it. It's okay. You needed to hear this. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I was able. Well, I'm glad that God put this on my heart because I feel like a lot of people do need to hear that. Um, we can get really distracted by things that aren't even that important day to day. And it can just be like, look at this huge thing over here that's happening. And it's almost to take our focus off of Jesus to see like, Oh no, everything's going wrong. Everything is falling apart. And it's like, no, <laughs> just pay attention to the Lord. First time I could catch you live. Hello from France. Bonjour, right? <laughs> is that how you say it? My mom speaks French very well. It's like, I feel like you have to hold your mouth a certain way and I haven't gotten a, gris a grasp on that, but it sounds so pretty. I love it. Hi, Kaitia. Hello. Yay! I'm glad that you guys have gotten a lot of this. A lot out of this, I should say. And that it resonated. So true, OMG. Praise God. Absolutely. He is worthy of praise. I've had dreams with people I've fallen out with and it's all been negative. Yeah, continue to pray um, on that because sometimes God needs there to be a resolution. There's been people I've fallen out with and I'm just like, oh, great. I have interaction with them in real life and then I got to go to sleep and think about it again like I just want it to be over and it wasn't until I really resolved things even if I distanced myself or cut them out of my life if I was still dealing with fear or anxiety like what if I run into them or what if they say something what if they judge me what if they gossip it wasn't until I was like you know I don't even care I literally don't care it has nothing to do with me anymore when I moved on I didn't really dream about them anymore Dreams are very important and we should pay attention as God talks to us. Amen. Tips on what to do when the enemy's voice sounds so loud and God's voice sounds so small. I have a harder time focusing on God's truth when I'm overwhelmed by the negativity of the world. Exactly. That is what the enemy wants you to do. I would say what helped me um, is filtering out all of those alarms and alerts, you know, of the news and the media. Like I had to just stop 
watching the news, stop reading certain articles. I even deleted my Facebook account because it was just like everybody, it just felt like everybody's yelling. And then even certain content on TV, if it was like scary or even if it was just mildly scary, I was like, I don't need the fear in my life. I don't need any of that. And the enemy's voice will try to drown out the Lord's if you keep feeding yourself that. So it's, it's basically about what you're taking in, like you have to control what comes into your ears, what comes into your eyes. So make sure that you're, if you have to pr- listen to praise and worship all day, if you have to read the Bible all day, if you have to stop listening to music at all, if you have to stop watching TV at all, stop paying attention to the news. Like these are things that you need to do, like filter, purposely filter everything that comes in to your eyes and your ears and even the things that come out if you're just like oh man you know another stupid day you know with all this stupid stuff going on in the world is like if you're speaking out that negativity too you're hearing that and you're believing that so just understand it's like god is on the throne jesus is on the throne like that's all i know god is in control even if you just have to say that you know and start to read more scriptures about how good god is and how he protects us how he cares for us And fill yourself up with that so that you have something to fight with when you do have those moments where you're like, everything is going wrong and I can't take it. And and Satan's voice is so loud. Like, just keep speaking those things out loud where it's like, God is in control of my life. I belong to him. I'm covered in his blood because that will help you. That helped me a lot. I had to do that a lot of times. God spoke to me through you. Thank you. Thank God. (laughs) I'm very glad to hear that. Drama in the world needs to stop, especially on Instagram. Oh, and that's another thing. Unfollow. A lot of people, anybody where it's like it causes you anxiety, jealousy, feeling overwhelmed, comparison. That's why I follow six people on Instagram and barely anybody on even YouTube because I have to be very careful about what emotions I'm allowing to come up and affecting my mood and all that stuff. So even just not even just taking I know some people take a break from Instagram and then they come back on it and you're still following the same people, but just anybody you come across where you're like nope 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 just start unfollowing a lot of people block people unfollow people if there's friends you need to mute do that (laughs) do it for your sanity for your safety you have to my son says hello oh hi baby (laughs) what's the best way to turn non-believers toward god um by one thing that god has already always brought up to me and this is me so i can't tell everybody what to do because it's a case by case thing but what has helped me a lot is telling my testimony telling what god has done in my life you know if somebody and they're not a believer and they're like you know what i deal with anxiety or i'm dealing with this or like i have family relationship problems and you're like you know what um i can pray for you if you want to and also this is what helped me you know i was reading the bible and i feel like god answered my prayers and these are the practical things he said like just keeping it something that helped me is like keeping it personal um when it comes to like having interactions with people because you can quote all the scriptures and you can say you're doing these things wrong and that's wrong but when you're like putting it on you it's like they feel a little less criticized they don't think that you're trying to tell them what to do or control them because some people feel like that when we tell them something even if we're not meaning to do that so yeah keep the focus on yourself this is what helped me this is what i learned this is what i know to be true in my life do you need prayer or i, I can pray for you another time do you want to come to church with me but yeah just keep loving on them the way that god needs you to and keep praying about it too because god will tell you like you need to have this conversation with this person or you need to remove this person from your life because sometimes we keep people in and it's like we might be the one to save them and it's like girl if it's been 20 years and their life is still the same and they want nothing to do with your god in some in some cases obviously pray about it but in some cases like they're just not meant to be that close to you or in your life because that can be very draining if you're constantly like oh i gotta be there for them i gotta do this and they're not listening and blah blah so i've had those situations too and so is my husband and you feel kind of bad letting it go because you are like what if i'm the one but god is the one who saves the holy spirit is the one who works if you've already planted those seeds and you don't see any change and it's bringing a lot of drama and negativity and it's draining to you ask god if you should cut them off and and he'll make it clear to you yes you honestly become what you consume that it, it definitely does um happen church herds be like we're the true christ crew clicks in the pew too like for real yeah it's true they'll be like this is the only true church and you should come to this church 
I also suggest going on YouTube and finding Bible verse loops. Play it in your ears as you sleep and the word really sticks with you. And um, I use the Bible app. It's basically just like, it looks like a Bible. It's just called Bible app. And you can even have that read to you out loud too. Um, go to whatever passage that you want to and click read aloud and it'll just read all night. And I've, I've done that. My husband's done that. My mom has done that. Like it really does help to just, you constantly just have the word, especially if you feel like you're really going through some really, really, really bad stuff. And it's really hard for you. Like sometimes you just, just keep absorbing it <laughs> as much as you can and keep praying. It might be a fast that you need to do, but seek God in that and just as far as you can control it, you know, uh, obviously if you go out to a restaurant and they're playing certain music, you can't be like, you better not play that. But as far as you can control, control the things that you're reading, seeing, watching, hearing, all that stuff. Alrighty. So that is it. Um, thank you for everyone who joined me today. Usually I'd be busy in my country. Thank you for speaking today. It's morning here. Hello and love from South Korea. Well, good morning. I'm glad that you got to um, bring that up. Any Bible app? Yeah, it's just called the one that I use. That's the only one I can really vouch for because I, I know what it is. Um, but yeah, it's just called the Bible app. Just look up Bible app. And sometimes it'll say the U version Bible app and it has every single different translations like NIV, New King James, King James, all that stuff. So let's go ahead and pray and close out. It's been a good, I guess like almost 40 minutes. Um, thank you guys for tuning in today, but I do wanna cover you guys in prayer. So let's go ahead and do that. Lord, I just thank you so much um, for helping us that if we're gonna identify with anything, with any group, um, let it be the church. Let it be the real church. Let it be the Bible-believing church, the body of Christ. Um, thank you, Lord, that your word is an instruction manual for us and that we can seek you and come to you and be in your presence when we feel overwhelmed and confused. So I pray that everyone who's watching this right now and listening right now, that you will just help them with anything that particularly stands out to them that they need to remember help it to just come up at the right times help it to be nourished and to grow and to bear fruit in their lives i just thank you jesus that we don't have to be afraid of any person anything any thought we don't have to be afraid but we do have to control the things that we do the things that we allow in and the things that we even allow out of our mouths so please help us all, Lord, because we all fall short in this area. Sometimes we allow our flesh to rule over us. So I just pray that you help us, Lord, to continue to be transformed and renewed by your power. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for what you've done, sending your son to die on the cross for us. He has already overcome fear and death and illness and disease, everything, Lord God. So I just thank you for this time and just wanted to pray. Um, and ask that you bless those who are hearing this right now and that this will just really be something that they'll be able to hold on to when the enemy does try to come in. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to be uploading this onto the uh, YouTube, they call it. So I'm going to go ahead and do my outro. So that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like this or if, you, if it helped you, please share it with a friend that you think it might also help. If you want to partner up with me in sharing the good news about God, I have two ways that you can do that. The first is to buy my merchandise. I have it on my site, lamoreinchrist.com slash apparel. It's also going to be in the description when I upload this on YouTube. And the second way is to donate through a secure PayPal link. Any amount helps. Thank you for all who have supported me in every single way. Kind words, comments, donations, buying my merchandise, praying for me. All of that stuff really, really does. It really does help. And don't take that lightly. It helps. And I really appreciate it. So if you like videos like this, I'm here every Sunday talking about my walk with God and what he's doing in my life. And also on Wednesdays, I am talking about personal stuff and doing hair tutorials, makeup stuff all kinds of things and also i forgot to mention this but my husband is starting a new series on his channel called he said she said we're going to be diving more into the herd mentality this is going to be up soon within the next week so i'm going to be talking and he's going to be talking about our different viewpoints on different topics so when that is up i will be putting that in the description box as well and yeah don't forget to subscribe and turn your notifications on and all that good stuff so thank you again for everything and i will see you down in the comments and i love you guys and have a wonderful day all right bye